report. We always have the recording and um, feel free to take a look one more time uh, and work on it um, in some, some of your own time. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Yep. So we just wanted to review again. Um, in Zoom, we ask that you use just the Q&A box for only questions related to this session on the topic being presented. If we dismiss your question, um, it doesn't mean that we don't want to answer you again. Um, we will just refer you to resources and office hours for unrelated questions. We'll be using the Zoom chat to send you links at the end of the session to all the resources, the recordings, as well as the link for CTLE hours. Okay? And as Jen mentioned, everything's recorded and everything is already on our iLearn site. We'll share the links with you again at the end of the session. So for today in session six, uh, the focus is to personalize the homepage. So objectives are to personalize learning paths with groups and release conditions. I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, to personalize the course homepage for students. Um, we can motivate students with awards and badges and we'll also show you how to copy course components from one section to another. So potentially if you've created something in your sandbox that you like, you can use that um, in your actual course when you get them. Now we are going over various skills and tools today, replacement strings, groups, release conditions, we'll show you the nav bar again, awards, badges, and um, import, export, and copying course components. Lots of stuff today, so we're going to get right into it. Uh, just as a preview, um, the first couple things we're going to talk about are groups of students. Okay? So this is a way to personalize learning. Okay? So in creating groups, it is teacher assigned. Okay? It's by level. Um, you can also randomly assign groups by size. Um, you can uh, randomly assign number of groups. You can have students select themselves. You can select single students, etc. Or I'm oh, sorry, you can select students into a group. Okay, so there's lots of options on how to set up the groups, which we'll show you. You may have heard this term release conditions being used last week. So release conditions can be used to hide content and activities until a condition is met, which is a way to personalize a learning path. So for example, you can show assignments to only certain groups, right? So uh, a certain group of students can go on to, let's say, extra credit if a homework assignment is turned in, or you can have it set up so that they don't progress to a quiz until all of the content has been viewed, okay? Uh, lots of different options which are gonna be controlled by you, the teacher. So we are going to uh, just make sure I can. Um, we're gonna watch a video here in a second. I want to make sure my sound is on. Yep, sound is on. Okay, so we're going to watch this. It's about 20 minutes of differentiating content and assessments using groups. Um, just to know, um, there's no need to sign into your own sandbox, so just sit back and listen for right now. today's going to be a demonstration of how to differentiate your content using groups and so really there's kind of two main things you have to know that you need to do to be able to do this um, you need to create the groups in your course and so you can be creating groups based on um, based on levels or maybe you have a couple students in your class who are on an IEP and they need to be in a group together because they're going to get different projects than the rest of the group um, or perhaps you um, want to create, you know, say three groups in your class to divide them out or kind of sort them, for lack of a better term, into different leveled groups. Um, and so you can create multiple sets of groups, whether it's for, you know, one set for your levels, one set for your um, ELL learners, um, and so on. So you can create those uh, different group categories, is what they're called. And then the next step is to release something to the students based on that group using what's called a release condition. And when I say release that something, that something could be um, some additional supplementary materials that you put in the content tool of your course 
course or an additional assignment that you've created just for some specific groups of students um, in the assignments tool or in the quiz tool. Um, there's actually release conditions or the ability to put conditions on releasing things all throughout the environment. So it's not just content that you can release or assignments that you can release based on these groupings, but you can release announcements. If you just want to send a message out to specific groups of students, you could put a release condition on announcements as well. So this is really helpful um, in, for many, many reasons, um, but the reason I'm going to focus on today is for the purpose of differentiating your content so that not all students are seeing the same thing in your course. Maybe you're working with the Admentum content or the Scholastic Lit Camp content. Whatever it is, you might want to be adding your own supplementary materials and releasing those to specific groups of students. So that's my goal here today is to show you how you would do that. So as I said, two big steps. The first one is to create the groups, and that's what we're going to do first. So I'm in the iLearn NYC platform here. I'm logged in. You can see as Tammy teacher, so I'm a, I'm a teacher, and I'm going to hop into a course. And so I'm going to go just into the uh, uh, Summer in the City 2020 sandbox course. And now, as you're probably familiar with, when you come into a course, you're sitting at the home page of the course. And so just to take you a little tour of what's going on in my course, I just want to make you aware of what I've got in here so far. So I've got a couple of announcements, some that are automatically being posted. Those virtual field trips are, are automatically being posted. I'm using the activity feed to post some, um, some messages to my students, but I, I could be using the announcements tool as well. If I go up, to my content tool, I've got a couple of units or folders sitting here, Scholastic Lit Camp, a couple others. Some are visible, or these first four are visible to students. You can see this one's got an eye with a line through it, uh, so it's not visible to students. And I've created a unit here uh, with some supplemental activities. And so you see one of them's a Google Doc that I've uh, added to my content tool. One of them's a Word document um, that I've just uploaded. Uh, one of them's an additional assignment that I created. Uh, one of them's a, a, an additional quiz that I created. So these are all um, these are all examples of things that I could be creating uh, to release to specific groups of students. However, right now, these are visible to everyone. Um, so like I said, we're going to take a little trip over to the groups tool and set up some groups so that I can um, release these supplemental activities uh, to those specific groups. Now, to get to the groups tool, um, you probably are already aware that your navigation bar at the top, this helps you navigate in and around the course, right? It's a two-liner, so we've got this little uh, arrow here that pops down to the second line if, uh, if your nav bar has that many icons. And you can see that I don't see the groups tool on my nav bar. It's not in my toolkit, um, and that's okay. If there's ever a tool that you need access to that's not in your, kind of like your quick access panel, then you can actually go to the list of all the tools available in your course uh, by clicking on course admin. And so that will show you how to, um, uh, that will give you a list of all the tools in your um, all the tools in your in your classroom or in your in your virtual space that you have access to. So I'll click on course admin. And now I've got a list of all the tools. Some of them already are on the nav bar, but some of them aren't. And namely that groups tool that I was talking about. So see right here, here's how we get to the groups tool. So I'm going to click on that. And when I first come here, it's pretty empty because I haven't set up any groups yet. And so I'm going to go ahead and create my first set of groups. And the first set that I want to create, because I want to show you a couple different examples, is um, I'm going to say leveled groups. So let's say I'm, I'm, I'm a teacher and I want to divide my class into three different groups, kind of like a, a level one uh, group who might be, who might kind of struggle, they need some extra support, um, a, a level two group that um, are kind of working right at grade level, um, they're okay to plug along in that, uh, in that middle group, and then a level three group who might be 
might be more my advanced learners that I want to be releasing um, supplementary material to them to challenge them a little bit more. So I'm for, for this example, I want to create three different groups and divide my class into those three groups. And so I'm going to call these leveled groups. So just give it a name because like I said, I can have multiple sets of groups. And so this set of groups are my leveled groups. You can give it a description and everything, but um, no need for, for, um, for my example here. I'm really just going to keep this simple. Uh, the only other important field is the enrollment type. And the default is the one I actually want number of groups. So I mentioned that I said I, I want three groups. So that's the number of groups that I want. And so that's the enrollment type that I'm looking for. I know that I want three groups. So it's number of groups. Number of groups you can see actually has two options. There's number of groups and then there's number of groups, no auto enrollments. So if I selected number of groups, that would automatically divide the whole class into three different groups randomly. Um, but I don't want that, right? I want to say, nope, my level ones go in this group, my level twos go in this group, my level threes go into this group. So I'm looking for the option number of groups, no auto enrollments. And that's going to be the most common one that you're going to use for the example that I'm talking about today, the idea of um, creating differentiated groups, grouping uh, students based on level, interest, you know, um, uh, familiarity and, and need around English language learners, that sort of thing. Um, you're probably most of the time going to use this number of groups. You can see there's lots of other options, things like self-enrollment where students can sign up to be a part of groups and um, kind of other, other types of grouping that you can use. But like I said, for today's example and what we're talking about today, differentiating your content, number of groups is going to be the one with no auto enrollments is going to be the one um, that you're going to want. And so like I said, I, I know I want to divide my class into uh, three different groups. And that's really the, uh, the most important fields here. There's a couple of other ad additional advanced options, um, but we're not going to get into those. We're going to keep it really simple and just talk about those three places that you need to fill out to create your groups. Your category name, choosing your enrollment type, and then how many groups you want. And so I'll hit save. And now what will happen is I've got my leveled groups and group one, group two, group three. And you can see there's no students in e any of these groups because I said no auto enrollments. Don't automatically enroll students in these groups. I want to select who's in what group. So now my next step is to do that. So I would go into group one. And right here, there's enroll users. And so I can, you can see there's additional options like adding a description that you might use for other examples. But in this example, we're going to go right to enrolling the users. We won't use those. And so when you do that, when you sit, we're enrolling them in group one. And now here's a list of all the students in my class. I've got a big class full of demo students. And then it's just up to the teacher. I can go ahead and check off the students who fall into uh, this level one. And again, this is me thinking about who are the students that I want to put in a group together so that when I add some content or have an additional assignment, I can say, give this assignment or give this content to group one of my leveled groups. So I'll hit save. And you can see, there we go. I've added six members to my group one. And so then I could go through and now do the same thing for group two. Maybe there, you know, for some reason, there's some additional uh, materials that I know I'm going to want to be sending directly to group two and go ahead and enroll those users or those students. I'll just check off a bunch randomly. And so I can go ahead and do that and uh, um, do that for the entire class. And now I've uh, and now I've got my leveled groups and I'm just going to quickly do it for group three just so that uh, um, just so we see some numbers in each one. I don't obviously remember which ones I checked off when you're doing this in real life. Um, you would know who who's who you're adding to each group. I'm just kind of randomly clicking on things, uh, which means I might have some students who are in the same group twice. Uh, you probably wouldn't want that in real life uh, for this example anyway. Uh, but there we go. All right, so I've got three groups here, each with a couple of students in each one. And so now that I've done that, 
now I can go and um, release that content um, or that assignment um, or that quiz or that discussion or that announcement um, to these specific groups. So that's our step one, right? That's the step one of um, uh, building the groups. But before we go over to that step two, the idea of putting that release condition on the content or the assignment or whatever it is, um, I would just want to show you two other examples of how you might set up groups. Because in this example, this example is kind of like, I want to take my whole class and divide them into three groups. Um, but you might have a, a circumstance where it's more like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to group the entire class. I just want one group that's for my English language learners. And I want them in a group together so that I can add some supplementary content to the content tool for my English language learners and very easily release that content just to them. And so I want to show you how to do that, right? You don't have to set up a group so that every member of the class is a part of a specific group. Um, so I'm going to set up another category. I'm going to go new category. And I want to create a special category of groups. In this case, it's going to be of a group. It's just going to be one category for one particular group. And I'm going to call this ELL. And then again, I want a number of groups. I just want one. I just want to take a couple of students and put them into one group. And so I'll hit save. And so now, now it's created one group within that new category for those ELL students. So I'll go into group one and just do the same thing that I did. Enroll those users. And then check off, let's say I've got a couple of my ELL learners, say these four students are ELL learners. And so now they're a part of that group. And so again, now I've got two kind of categories sitting in my, or two examples sitting in my course. I've got my leveled groups that I've divided the entire class into three different groups, or I've got my ELL groups where, or my ELL group where I just grabbed four students and put them in a group here. Uh, I want to show you, actually, I'll, I'll go over to the, the content tool now and show you now that we've created these groups, how do you go about uh, releasing content or specifying now only show this content or only show this assignment to, um, uh, to a specific group. And so I'm going to jump over to content. And so what I showed you at the beginning there, those supplemental activities, right now those are visible to everyone, but I don't want everyone to see these items. I only want specific groups to see them. So I can either put a release condition on the entire unit and say this entire folder called supplemental activities, um, release it to the specific group, or I can go on the individual items within the folder and put release conditions on those individually. And so I'm going to do it that way. I'm going to go on the individual item. So this YKL um, uh, Google Doc, and I'm going to put a release condition on it. So I select it. That's checked off for it's selected. And then on the three dots here, you can see there's view release conditions. So this is your key place here, view release conditions. Check that off. And now you go to create your release condition. And there's actually, the release condition we're talking about today is releasing content based on group enrollment, based on a group that they're enrolled in. But there's actually a ton of other release condition types, but we're not, we're not gonna talk about all of those today. Um, but you can see, right, there's, there's, there's lots you could really build on with release conditions. But for the purpose of today's, we're just talking about releasing content based on groups. And so to find that release condition, it's under the class list section, and then there's group enrollment. And so the condition type is based on group enrollment. So that looks good. And then the details. So it's going to say, okay, so what group do you want to release this YKL 
uh, document to. And so you select your group. And so when you select your group, what do you see here? All those groups that we just created. So there's that um, category of ELL learners, which we just have one group with those four uh, students uh, in the group, or the leveled groups where I've created three different groups, each with uh, a couple of, couple of students in each one. And so let's pretend that this document is a supplementing, supplementary material for my ELL learners. Um, so I want to release it to them. So I select group one. And I say create. And so now this activity is only visible to those who satisfy its condition. What's the condition? They have to be a member of the group ELL group one. So we hit save. And now you can see we've got this little indicator here that it, it's visible to students, but only if the conditions are met. And what are the conditions? Being a member of that, uh, um, that ELL group one. Okay. So now that you can see I've got this little symbol here, I've added that condition onto this piece of content. But I also, as I mentioned, I have an assignment sitting here, a supplemental assignment that's sitting in the assignments tool. I could do the same thing in the assignments tool. So if I go to this assignment, and edit that assignment. So when I'm creating the assignment or if I want to make a change to the assignment so it's only visible to specific people, then when I'm creating this assignment, you'll see that there's an option in, uh, in the assignment creation experience under restrictions where I can add a release condition here as well. Now, Keep a little tip, if you're using these a lot, use the attach existing. So if you've already created the release condition, it'll be sitting under the attach existing. So you see there, attach existing. I don't need to go through all those clicks of going to group enrollment, selecting the group, and now I can really quickly release it to the CLL what group one. But just for the sake of example, let's create a new one and release this to you know, my group two of my leveled uh, groups. So I'll go to create and attach and just do the same thing that we did with content. It's the same thing, except in this case, I'm releasing this assignment only to a specific group of students. So I click on the condition type, I find class list, group enrollment, and select my group. And so I said I want to give it to group two of my leveled groups. Create. And so now they have to be a member of that group. Now, if we do want to get fancy, if that's, uh, um, if that's not enough for you, you want a little bit more, I will mention that you can have multiple release conditions. So if this applies to group two and group three, you can say create and attach and do that same thing and add it for group three. Group enrollment, group three, create. And so now you've got two release conditions on there. So just an additional option if you do have some examples where, oh, actually, I want this to go to a couple different groups, you can do that as well. So I'll hit save and close. And what you'll notice is in the assignments tool, I've got this little symbol here on it now. And that means that there's release conditions on this assignment. It's not visible to everyone. Now, the last thing I want to show you before we get into any open Q&A um, is around creating individualized groups. So it's a bit of a, a misnomer because when you think of a group, you think of many people within a group, but it's actually possible with the groups tool to create a separate group for every individual student in your class. And what that will allow you to do is, you know, what if there's just, you know, one, one assignment where you're like, I just want this to go to that one specific student. Um, right? But maybe they're a part of group one that has, you know, four other students in it. So what you can do is go to the groups tool and set up an individual group for every student in the class, which sounds like a lot of work, but it's not because it's only a couple clicks to automatically do it for you. Um, so I'm going to head back to the groups tool and show you how to do that because it's a handy thing to know. Um, again, if you have a lot of those examples where it's like, I only want it to go to this student or I only want it to go to this student. Uh, so I'll go back to course admin and find my way back to the groups tool. Course admin and then groups right here. So back to where we were and we've got those ELL groups. I've got the leveled group still sitting there, but I want to create a new category, a third example.
And so here, I'm going to call this individual groups. And here, under enrollment type, when I first showed you this, I said that the most common one you'll use is number of groups, no auto enrollments. But I want to just call out another one, and that's the last one on the list here, single user, member specific. And so if I click that, what that will do is that is going to create an individual group for every student in my class. So I'm not going to worry about, worry about these advanced additional properties. That's all I need to do is just give it a, uh, give it a name and uh, select the enrollment type. And so I hit save. And so now it kind of automatically creates uh, an individual group for every student in my class. So you see I have 16 students in the class and here they are each in their own individual group. And what that does is now when I head back to, let's go to the quiz tool this time. And let's say I wanna just release a, a little quiz that I built just to a specific student. So let's say this check for understanding two, I can go ahead and edit this one and add a release condition to it. Same, same deal, same release condition, but now we're gonna see an even bigger list um, under um, our list of groups. So if I go over to the restrictions tab, just like we did in the assignments tool, and then go to uh, release conditions. So remember, there's always that attach existing if you've used the condition before. So here's a, you know, the ones we've used as a nice little shortcut. Um, but we just created those individual groups. And so we haven't used those yet. So I'm going to click on create and attach. And condition type. And go down to that class list, that group enrollment again. And now what we have is in addition to those ELL groups and those leveled groups, there are those individual groups. And so now I can select individual students to release this in this example quiz to. And so let's say I want this to go to student 16. So I hit create and now uh, student 16 is the only student in this class um, that sees this quiz. And like I showed you in the last example, you know, if there were two or three students uh, that you wanted to release this to, then, you know, you could add multiple, uh, multiple release conditions uh, so, or multiple conditions. Whoops. Let me try that again. Uh, so I go back to uh, class list, group enrollment, and select, you know, student 17 as well. And so if you're always releasing additional things to students 16 and 17, well, then it might just be faster to put them in a group together. And then I can always just say release to that group of those two students. Um, or if it's, if it's not going to be something that you're, you're going to be using those two students together a lot, then keep them in individual groups. And just remember that you do always have the shortcut of attach existing. So students 16 and 17 will show up in that attach existing uh, the next time that you go to use a release condition. If they're kind of your, your frequent, um, frequent students that you're releasing individual content to. So I've hit, or, or quizzes or assignments or whatever it is. Um, so I've hit save there, and now you can see that release condition um, has popped up, that release condition symbol, meaning it's not visible to everyone. It's, um, um, it's only visible to those who satisfy the condition, which in this case will be, of course, student 16 and student 17. So next, after learning about how to differentiate the content for students, I want to show you further ways to personalize the course. So I'm going to show you two different things. Um, one is to change that banner and then how to um, change the sort of name of the course. Okay. So I'm actually going to go for this demo into my sandbox, JChun4. And you'll notice here it says JChun4 Sandbox Course. And let's say I'm teaching elementary school students, and this is not quite the right image for elementary school students. So what I'm going to do is hover over that image. And we're familiar with this top right corner, three dots, right? Um, and so if you click that, you can see here, you can change that image. Okay, so I'm going to click that. 
And the system already has a whole bunch of images you can choose. You can potentially upload your own. Um, but I'm going to say, let's say, element, I'm going to look for some elementary related image. Okay. So let's say I like uh, this one with the crayons. All I'm going to do is click this, use this image, and just like that, the banner image changes. Very, very easy. Okay. The other thing I'm going to show you, and I'm just going to pull up um, my two sides of my screen so we can see here. Okay, so I did this uh, last week. Okay. So on the left side here, you can see I've um, changed the image. Okay, and then now I'm going to show you how to use replacement strings, right? So instead of uh, my course saying J Chun 4, let's say I want to actually welcome the students. So I'm going to go back to this right side of my screen, click the three dots, and then I'm going to customize banner text. Okay. Right now, the default is it uses its course name, okay? But I'm gonna choose custom, okay? And what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna type in a replace string and there's a whole kind of bunch of replacement strings you can use. So for this one, I'm gonna write, go back here, welcome. And use these curly brackets. I'm going to enter in first name and you'll see what that does. Curly bracket, comma, to Miss Chun's class. Okay, I'm going to click save. And as you can see, it updates that banner. So it says, welcome, and this is my first name to Ms. Chun's class. So this is a really easy, quick way for you to use replace strings to change uh, the text in the banner, okay? Okay, so um, there, there are other things you can do as well. Um, in terms of replacement strings, you can personalize announcements. Okay, so um, last week we looked at some examples. I'm gonna go here. Um, let's take a look at what announcements are here. Okay. Oh, let me just full screen this. Let's say, let me just go back to our course homepage. Let's say I'm gonna create an announcement and just really quickly, new announcement. I'm just gonna call this welcome. Okay. And let's say I wanna personally welcome the student, okay? The replacement string I'm gonna use here in this HTML editor is hi bracket, and I'm just going to use that example that I did before, first name, close bracket, there, right? And then last week we showed you, you could potentially add images, etc. but I'm just going to publish that so you can see what it looks like. Um, go back to the course homepage, and you can see here my new announcement says hi, and it has the name, right? So whenever you have an announcement for students, you can use that first line to say hello or welcome. That way when the student sees it, they'll know, oh, um, my teacher, this, this is like just for me, right? It, it personalizes it and um, it's really nice for students to use. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna talk about then how to personalize further by changing the navigation bar. So we're gonna go to Jen now. All right, so let's take a look at personalizing um, the navigation bar. Okay, share into my screen. All right, just give me a second. So think of the nav bar as your quick access panel. Jeannie, I'm just gonna double check you can see my screen and hear me. Yes. Okay, great. So the rule is you want to keep your course admin, that's the one that looks like this, all right, on the nav bar. Students don't see it and it's your key to all the other tools not found on the nav bar, all right? So you can customize this nav bar. So let's take a look. To update the nav bar, you can place your mouse over the nav bar, customize the link by clicking on the custom app, sorry, by creating the custom link, 
And once there, you can name, insert the URL, give it a description, and upload the image that will appear in the icon on a nav bar. So let's take a look and see how we do that. Hello, today I'm going to show you how to add links and personalize your nav bar. First, take your mouse and hover over the icons until you see the three dots. Click on the three dots, and then you'll see two options. Click on edit this nav bar, and that will take you to this screen where you can add links. Click on add links. And here you'll see links that have already been created through iLearn that you can add to your nav bar. For example, to add the assignments tab, just check off next to the assignments tab, click on add. And as you can see, it has been added. And what you're going to do is you're going to save and close. And there is the assignments icon in your nav bar. Now let's just say you want to add a link that's not in the icons that are already presented to you by iLearn. Very simple. You're going to click on the three dots again. You're going to go into edit this nav bar. You're going to scroll down. You're going to click on add links. And then you're going to click on create custom link. Let's just say I want to add brain pop to my nav bar. So I'll just type in brain pop. And then I need the link or the URL to link the students to brain pop. So I will search for brain pop, click on to brain pop, and I will copy this link or URL. Then I will go back where it says URL and I will paste the URL. I'm going to leave this the same because I want the students to go to Brain Pop, which is a, a new window. Now, in the description, I'm just going to simply put their Brain Pop activities. Now, I need a picture to put in the icon so the students know which one to click, especially the younger students. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into Brain Pop and I'm going to find a picture that I like. So I'll scroll down, and I like Moby right here. So I'm going to click on Moby. This is a really cute picture. So I'm going to uh, save the image to my desktop in my pictures. Okay. And there it is, being saved to my pictures. I'm going to go back into my edit nav bar. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload the picture. Ah, there's Moby. Okay. And then I'm going to press create. There it is. Then again, I'm going to check it off and I'm going to add it to my links. I'm going to save and close it. And there is Moby and Brain Pop. Now let's just say I don't like the order that my icons are in. Well, I can change that as well. Again, three dots. Okay, I'm going to go to edit this nav bar. Okay, I'm going to scroll down. And let's just say I want Brain Pop in the beginning. Okay. I'm going to click on Brain Pop and I'm going to drag it. Now I'm going to place it to where the gray bar is. So let's just say I want it right under, uh, right after content. There it is. I'll save and close. And there it is. And that's how you personalize your nav bar. All right, so that should help us with adding links to the nav bar. I know for some of you that happened very quickly, again, the recording will be shared with you so that you can watch on your own time and fast forward and rewind as you need to, to see each step. All right, another feature that we can add is the awards. So here, the awards are a great way to motivate and engage your students. So whether you choose to give an award for academic achievement, participation or non-academic reasons, these are all ways we can give out the uh, awards. It can be hands-off by setting them up with the release condition or hands-on by issuing them manually. So have fun uploading your own badges and icon. 
When you issue an award, the next time the student logs on, they will get a little pop-up on it that looks like this. Hello, congratulations, you've received an award. All right. So these are examples of rewards you can give out. So some you're creating, so participation um, award, a lightning badge, homework hero, secret clue, any of these welcome to second grade. All right, so now let's take a look. And I'm just gonna exit this. Okay, the iLearn NYC awards tool enables you to issue digital badges and certifications either manually or based on a release condition. Um, they're gonna allow your course to be even more interactive and it gives that gamification feel to your course. It's really great to be able to motivate and engage students and you have the option. You can choose to do this based on, issue the awards based on academic achievements, participations, or non-academic reasons. Um, now you'll see that they ended up getting that. Okay. So now we are done with that. Let's take a look at copy.